Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present Realism Overhaul configurations for the H2B and H2A from the Japanese Launchers Pack, which is not a mod that I made, obviously. I need to make that clear because I have made parts now and I have my own little mod pack. But this is not anything to do with my parts. I have made RO configurations for somebody else's parts. And it's not just the Japanese Launchers Pack H2. I also made configurations for the wonderful HTV and uh, I had help from Raider Nick on that, uh, especially with the plumes and I also got some updated uh, foil textures from Raider Nick and so Raider Nick uh, lamented the look of the textures on the foil bits, he's very good at foil bits and so I've got files uh, to update those. So in the video description, you, there'll be a link to the original mod. Uh, I think it's on Curse Forge. And that's uh, there's one mod that's the Japanese Launchers Pack and another mod that's the HTV. And then uh, there's a link to the, the package with the RO configurations as well as the texture updates for the foil bits. So it's up to you whether you want the, uh, the foil bit updates, but uh, probably you do. You'll need Textures Unlimited to make that work out for you. Okay, so the Japanese Launchers Pack has many other rockets in it. It includes the Lambda rocket, the Epsilon, the Mu, and the H3. I've got tentative configurations for the Lambda and H3, but they're like two years old, so I haven't looked at them in a while. And I don't have anything on the Epsilon and Mu. So those will be coming up later. Those are all interesting rockets. Uh, to have to deal with and present their own tricks and challenges. Uh, but I figure that the one that's most useful to everybody is this one. And uh, also the H2A. So that's why I focused on this. And um, yep, uh, let's see how to put it together so that you understand how that works out. Um, and note the use of procedural fairings here. I decided not to use the fairings that it came, came with because of the way they separate, but I'll show those to you. So, new craft file, and uh, I added the tags so that you can just type h-2b, or I think uh, without the dash it also works, so that you can find them. So the fairings come in two sizes, the ones that come in the pack. There's the 4 meter and 5 meter. Uh, for the HTV we would want the 5 meter. But let's build the HTV first, actually just to get things in the right order. So there's the pressurized carrier module. That's this. This is the part that the astronauts can actually walk into. And then there's an unpressurized carrier uh, for experimental bits that go on the station. Uh, there's a Japanese exterior experiment module. I suppose that's what that's for. I don't know what the reentry capsule stack decoupler is for. Um, this says HTVR, which may or may not be an actual thing. Uh, there's the avionics module, which is... Oops, Next. Now, as far as the dry masses are concerned, I just took the full dry mass of the HTV and divvied it up. I don't know what the specific dry mass of each of these would be. Uh, so they, they got, you know, just a part of the overall dry mass so that the, the total dry mass was correct. And so there's the propulsion module there. Um, I've tried to fix the plumes on here. RaiderNet gave some help, but uh, uh, we'll have to check this time whether uh, I had to do one more tweak and we'll see whether that worked out because the plumes were still not showing up. But uh, the RCS plumes do work there. I'll, we'll have to see about the RCS plumes up here, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. The docking port here is configured as a common berthing mechanism, so it should match up with this docking port. Uh, and our main goal during this video is to test that because we'll have uh, one of these docking ports on the second stage to for this to dock with. And uh, right now this doesn't have any uh, supplies in it, so we should, well, in my craft file that I'll open up again, we'll have supplies in. It can carry up to six tons, so keep that in mind. Uh, we're looking at a 16.5 ton launch mass. Okay, back to the H2. So, we want the 5 meter fairing, and um, this comes with a decoupler as you can see, so watch out, because uh, the way you build the fairing around this is actually to attach something to the bottom node here. Um, and so it automatically builds the fairing like this. 
but you would have to use an action group to decouple the fairing um, rather than trying to press spacebar. So jettison shroud would be how you do that. And then they sort of jettison a skew and it's really weird and physics isn't properly applied to them. So that's why I'm not using them. So yeah, um, it's up to you. But after that, LE5 B2. And then there's, you know, we've got a second stage tank and an upgraded second stage tank. I have not made any difference to them. And the reason for that is because we don't have two versions of the LE5. Uh, the old second stage tank, I think, went with the uh, older LE5. So it, it really doesn't matter which one you pick, uh, except for the color. So they're currently configured both the same. The controller is up here and the this RCS and other things. Uh, it, this tank has the oxygen, this tank has the hydrogen. They have to go together. So, yep, yeah, that's that. And then we have a stack decoupler. And a shroud automatically goes over that, which is fine. And then there's H2A tank, H2B tank. Those are their appropriate masses. So, that should work out. At the bottom of the tank is the LE7A, and we want two of them for the H2B, one of them for the H2A. And then we want radial decouplers for the SRBAs. There's also the SSBs, those go on, uh, those can be used on the H2A. Those are also configured properly. So you can use those, but this time we're gonna be using the SRBAs for the H2B, and they go on in pairs. So like so, and then SRBA, just make sure the snap is on and the little top prongs are attaching. You see these little guys attach to those struts. So yeah, and if, if you need to make sure the JAXA labels on the outside, of course. Now the decouplers here, oh, no. We certainly need to make sure that the booster is attached to the decoupler and the way to do that is Alt click to copy them and paste them, and then you can certainly be sure. But um, yeah, they go off in pairs, but the decouplers separate them very straight, straight out. Uh, so, and KOS does not like the, these decouplers at all. I don't know why. They decouple fine when I'm doing it, but when KOS tries to handle the decoupling, they don't do well. So I put separatrons on the craft file that I'll open up again and I reduced the decoupling force on the struts. Anyway, so that's about it. That's how you put it together. And the H2A is more complicated because it has different configurations, sometimes with two of these SRBs, sometimes with two or four of those. So that uh, you'll have to look up. Uh, at least the parts are configured right. So I'm gonna open up the craft file that I was using before. And we're gonna try and get it to orbit, check out all the plumes, and uh, do the docking. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we are at Tanagashima, and we're gonna try and. Oh, wait. Oops, wrong place. We're at Florida. Let me move to Tanagashima. Okay, well, we sort of have a floaty runway, at least the runway is. A little bit above ground there but that's actually really difficult to fix so we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about that right now throttle up SAS on and I'm not gonna use KOS because I want to try this out on my own first and the margins are pretty tight actually so uh, we do have uh, food water and oxygen in you can see food water and oxygen and if we take a look at the delta V stats here uh, we're at 16 point uh, 278 tons. Remember, I said the max capacity is 16.5. Okay, so with that being said, uh, ignition. And launch. So for those asking whether realism overall is really ready for KSP 1.8, it's a work in progress. Uh, the one problem is like the shaders have changed and it's a new version of Unity 
So that causes all sorts of difficulties. Um, so it's a work in progress, but uh, it's something that is being tested and this is part of testing it, obviously. In theory, you could go to GitHub and get the masters, but that's a cumbersome process even for me. My own uh, rocket parts, the ones that I made, are messed up. I still have to fix those. Um, so those are only 1.3 to 1.6 compatible, uh, or maybe 1.7. But uh, yeah, in the latest version, the shaders on them make them look really weird. And that's because I used an older version of Unity to make them, I think. I don't know how miraculously the this Japanese launchers pack one seems to look pretty good. Despite being fairly old. So as far as the pitch goes, you probably want to hold about 40, 35 ish, maybe. For a while. Remember, the upper stage has to take some time to do its burn. And this doesn't have the greatest thrust, thrust to weight ratio once the boosters separate. There is a thrust tail off on them, but it's probably not the right one, and it goes out rather abruptly. So I'll have to work out, work on that, like that. So anyway, we can separate. So that's the first pair. That's a pretty good separation. But you can actually see the, the. Oh, I guess you can't see. But I tweaked the um, decouplers to forty percent and the. Uh, Separatrons have 50% of their fuel and 50% thrust, so... Took some tweaking. So, you can see the time to wap waps is going down now, that's fine. Now you see the time to wap waps, this is gonna creep up. And... We don't want that to get too high. Should be fine right there. Okay, let's separate the fairings. Off it goes. Depending what the foil is reflecting though, it can look a little bit greener. Oh shoot, we were supposed to go to 51 degrees. Well, we'll check it out here. We'll make sure we have enough uh, Delta V to spare to, uh, so that if we did go to the station's orbit, it should work out, hopefully. I don't put uh, remote tech configurations on anything, so it's RO configurations but not remote tech configured. It's using stock comms right now. Okay, I can probably mostly flatten out here. But we'll have to pitch up for the second stage anyway. Separation and ignition. You can put separatrons on here right now, they're not on. Okay, it's a good ignition and we will want to pitch up. About 12 degrees, I think, will do. Better than some upper stages. It's uh, got 1, 000, uh, sorry, 137 kilonewtons of thrust. 1,000 would be nice, but... Short nozzle, though, so it only gets 448 seconds of ISP. As with uh, these Hydrolox upper stages, we expect it to start going down again. That's nominal. Okay, we are going down a bit. And to make sure we round it out, I'm going to pitch up a little bit more here. Okay, periapsis is positive. And we're in a nice 234 by 206 orbit with 400 meters per second left in this stage. So I trust that that would be enough for somebody to get to 51.4 degrees or the station's orbit uh, as necessary. So, yep, I think that's plenty of margin. And we've got the docking port as the staging mechanism here. So let's stage off. Okay. And we want the thrusters to push us a little bit. Push, push. The little shroud is 
going askew. It looks, doesn't look like we've got uh, plumes on this. But RCS. I don't know about the front RCS. So I'm gonna set that as a target. You'd think they'd be firing, so might have to work on that. We'll see how well it controls itself and whether it can dock or not. Now let's see if we can back up actually. Okay, I don't think these front plumes... Oh, I, we are. They're just really slow? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. But if I can dock it, you can dock it, so. Okay, we are approaching. The front thrusters seem to work even though they're not showing their plumes. Well, let's hope I've configured this docking port right. Or at least better than the RCS plumes. Oh, I didn't realize they go that far in. Um, doesn't look like it. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, there was no magnetism at all. I'll have to figure out how to do that. Alright, so things need to be fixed, but this is how it is. It's still an H2B with an HTV and you can play around with it as you like. You could probably clip in a docking board if necessary. Won't look as pretty, but there we are. Uh, the RCS works, but the plumes do not, so it's up to you whether you want to add more RCS ports or not. Uh, they use MMH and MON3. Uh, the configuration files are um, what you got, Creative Commons with attribution, so uh, do with them as you like. And uh, watch out though if Realism Overall actually includes them in Realism Overall at one point. You don't want both copies in your folder, that can cause problems. That's for any other mod too. If uh, you get RO configurations from somewhere else, you might want to check in, in the RO suggested mods folder to make sure that there aren't already configurations for it there that could hang up your startup. Maybe that causes problems for some people, so keep that in mind. Anyway, so with this as it is, and work still needing to be done on this as well as on RO for 1.8, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.